Hello, my name is Dr. Kendall Lee. I'm the Director of Neural Engineering here at the Mayo Clinic. My team and I, we're truly excited to be presenting this paper to you that is coming out of the Mayo Clinic proceedings. Entitled, Ena Enabling Task-Specific Volitional Motor Function via Spinal Cord Neuromodulation in a Human with Paraplegia. We're very excited to present this paper. This paper was done in collaboration with Dr. Reggie Egerton's team at UCLA, as well as Dr. Kristen Zhao's team here at the Mayo Clinic. This study demonstrates that the use of epidural electrical stimulation in a patient who had complete thoracic spinal cord injury, Asia A, meaning that it was both motor and sensory complete, that the patient using epidural stimulation was able to get volitional movement control back of his lower extremities. In addition, we've also demonstrated that the patient could stand following the epidural stimulation. The first author on this paper was Dr. Peter Gran, who will be explaining more of the details of the findings in this paper. So my name is Dr. Peter Gran, and I'm an engineer in the Neural Engineering Lab here at Mayo Clinic and I'm working on a project, a clinical trial, where we're using epidural electrical stimulation of the spinal cord to enable volitional control of motor function after chronic paralysis. So our findings are novel in that, well first showing replication at such an early time point just during the first eight days of stimulation, but then our second finding that's novel is that rhythmic activity, step-like movements can be volitionally controlled, so initiated modulated in their amount of movement and then terminated volitionally. It's been shown that uh, rhythmic activity can be elicited using epidural stimulation, but that this activity is not controlled volitionally by the subject. I am Kristen Zhao, Director of the Assistive and Restorative Technology Laboratory in the Rehabilitation Medicine Research Center, and I am co-PI on this project. Um, really, the PMNR portion of this study is uh, the prehab, so the rehabilitation um, prior to the implantation of the stimulator, and that is about um, 21 weeks or 60 sessions, and then post-op after the stimu after the stimulator is implanted, um, we have another 38 weeks of rehabilitation, and this is comprised of um, overground training, so standing um, and uh, stepping if possible and then uh, treadmill training. So the goal of this project really is to replicate a study that was performed by um, UCLA and the University of Louisville. And um, really they've been critical in helping us to understand what they've done prior, what they did in their study with their protocols for rehabilitation, implantation, um, and then post-op therapy. I think the results of this study are very promising. Um, we're happy that the results are similar to the previous study and, and we think we've successfully replicated up to this point. Um, and we hope to uh, continue working to understand the mechanisms of the data and, and the patient's um, recovery to date. Uh, we have a team that's um, really successfully worked together that consists of researchers from neural engineering and from rehabilitation medicine and they've come together um, with both research backgrounds and clinical backgrounds to, to make this project a success. My name is Igor Lavrov. I'm assistant professor in the Department of Neurosurgery, and I'm co-author of this paper. Uh, the subject in the study was very excited about overall process, and uh, we definitely appreciate all his efforts and uh, passion uh, being with us all this time and following all procedures, and uh, definitely this excitement was shared between the whole team and subject. Um, we can definitely say that uh, his recovery over those months is extremely um, going well. This study is definitely important for um, future clinical practice and it gives hope to the patients in terms of potential restoration of motor functions in uh, those cases when clinically we verify complete injury. In the same time, there are more questions to answer and this study still require more understanding of mechanisms behind our findings. This is the first paper to show that in the same patient, within the first two weeks following epidural stimulation,
the patient was able to recover volitional control over the leg as well as standing. This is truly exciting finding and we hope that you enjoy the paper. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.